What's good everybody, it's Hipopolis Dilly here back with another brand new video. Usually I make videos about the US culture with gangs wearing bandanas and shooting each other with guns. Today I thought of doing something way different. In this video we will travel to a place filled with rainy weather, masked dudes with knives and drill music. If you thought about England, you are right. A lot of you heard about this movement called UK Drill and its gruesome lyrics about murders and stabbings. Today we gone see what is behind these lyrics and the cruel reality of England's capital, London. We gone take a look on differences between American gangs and British gangs and we gone debate if London is really that dangerous and what side of London is the craziest. Follow me into the video to hear about the history of London's most dangerous drillers. So for this video to make sense, we gone head back to the origins of London's gang scene and its drill movement. Y'all know what drill music is, we talked about this in my previous videos. I made videos about Chicago drill with gangs like 600 and 051 and I made videos about New York drill. But before the New York drill it was another place that made noise with this genre. London. London natives started rapping on Chicago drill beats at first and they were really talented. A group called 6-7 dominated the UK drill scene with songs like Live Corn and Let's Lurk. But what made these youngsters to jump on the mic like that? So we gone start our journey in South London in a place called Brixton. So Brixton is known as a dangerous place that has been through wars with another neighborhood called Peckham. Handguns, 4-5s, magnums. Long nose, snub nose, whatever. Brixton it's used to rap with its two crews that are doing songs together. The Brixton Hill Boys later known as 6-7 and the Gas Gang or 150. You can see in their videos that the both gangs are cool with each other. But later on something sparked between them that separated Brixton into sides. This beef started the drill movement in UK with one of the first UK drill songs to come out in 2013 when a couple of guys from 150 dropped its cracking that was a heavy diss track towards the 6-7. 6-7 came back with their own diss drill song using the same beat that 150 used in its song and named it Let's Frying. But what actually made the gangsters diss each other? We already know that 6-7 and 150 are allies, but 6-7 had one more ally. The TN1 gang located in Tulse Hill. TN1 was cool with 6-7 but not with 150 and on 2nd of July in 2010 something happened that shook the Brixton gang world when a 15 year old member of TN1 was making his way to the pupil referral unit which is a school for the kids who have been kicked out of their mainstream schools. Unfortunately, 5 members of Gas Gang were making their way to the school also. Before little Zap of TN1 could even get to the school gates the 105 members jumped out on him. Instead of running into school, little Zap tried to make a breakthrough on the road. He almost managed to escape but unfortunately he was caught and stabbed multiple times. The five gas gang members were caught and arrested. One of them was the rapper JJ who was a big rapper at the time. Multiple incidents plus this one caused the Brixton to divide into sides. And this separation made the gangs dissing each other on drill beats and creating the UK drill that we know today. Now we gone sink more into this subject checking another division of London with whole other gangs and rappers. Ethnic. From the cases that I've seen, I think this is the craziest side of London. East London is known for shootings, stabbings and acid attacks. Yeah, you heard right. Acid attacks. Acids are fast replacing knives as the weapon of choice for criminals. The gang members have now used it as a, as a weapon of choice. Acid attacks are a part of the extreme violence of London. It can result in permanently scarring the skin and the worst attacks cause people blindness. Residents of East London say that the police can't control the wild teens and you can see drug dealers everywhere. People in East London have nothing to lose and they attack even innocent civilians because the gang members are paranoid. They suspect everyone of being with the upside. Like the 4th of September 2017 when Kerry Jr. Davis got shot to death. It is said that the kid was not involved in anything. He was a civilian. How the gang members are calling the people who are not affiliated. Some people in East London are walking with anti knife vests to avoid death. That's why East London is the craziest side. Like South London having its gangs, East London has its crews too. Gangs like a CG or anyone can go, a respected gang based in Beckton, Southside Doom. But unfortunately, the CG's rappers are active too, but not on the mic. 
in the streets. Trizzy Trapp's career came to an end after he was sentenced to 14 years in prison for an acid attack. A CG is known to beef with gangs such as 7th, BWC, CG, and G Block. So you'll see UK gangsters don't really use firearms like Americans use. But why is that? First of all, guns in UK can get you a really long sentence. That's why the UK rappers, even if they have guns, they don't really show them in their music videos. The feds even watch the gangsters' music videos. Like in Stabber's case, a London rapper who showed a gun in one of his videos. Feds came to his house and took him to prison. Guns are also hard to get in England and that's why the gangsters often use knives. Plus a lot of England's attackers say that a knife is more efficient. Knives are also illegal but cost less and have a smaller sentence if caught. An example of a long sentence because of a gun is Reeks MB. He got a 16 year sentence for the possession of a gun. But the gunplay brings us to another chapter of this video. So North London is known for active long beefs and quick retaliation. They are also known for shootings. So like in every part of London, we have gangs. And a couple of the crews from this place are known for gunplay. The original farm boys formerly known as the Tottenham Mandem are located in Broadwater Farm. Broadwater Farm is known since the 80s as one of the most dangerous estates. The north is different from the other sides of London not only because of the gunplay. The local gangs are wearing colored bandanas to show their affiliation like the US gangs do. OFB, the gang that I mentioned earlier wears red as their primary color. Another gang that wears colored bandanas is in PK or North Cumberland Park. They rock purple bandanas instead of red distinguishing them from the Bloods inspired gang from the area. Also 10 minutes away from Broadwater Farm is an area called Woodgreen and the gang that historically runs things in this area is known as MOB. Now around 25 minutes away from Woodgreen, on the other side of Tottenham is Edmonton Green where the gangsters from this area are calling themselves N9. But more importantly, N9 spawned one of the biggest rappers of England. Time Wayne. So the war between Tottenham's and Greens has been going on for decades. This beef started as simply as just teenagers having fist fights after school. These fist fights eventually escalated to knife fights and later on firearms entered the mess. A big escalation came in 2005 when an NPK member was attacked and stabbed by Shank Stars members later known as N9 at a gas station being left with serious injuries and soon the NPK started to beef with Edmonton Shank Stars and Stargang or Opie started to beef with the Wood Green. In 2005, Tottenham area had 20 incidents of violent disorder in an eight-week period. The attacks have also included the shooting of a 17-year-old outside of the Broadwater Farm Community Center, three shootings on the 22 of April and a hit-and-run incident in High Broadwood Green involving eight-year-old Reen McClarty Brown on March 19. On May 1st of 2005, 22-year-old Andre Linton from Tottenham was shot at close range after his car was surrounded by up to six black ewes in Buller Road just before 11 p.m. But these are not the only gun-related incidents that happened in North London. On 28th of October, 2006, a Woodgreen MLB affiliate named Jerome Vassal was shot in the head outside of a Woodgreen community center. He was left with brain damage and died after a year. Beef intensified so bad and became so violent that the cops did everything they could to stop the violence. They banned people from their own areas, like Michael Gator who has been banned from Woodgreen for five years. So you've seen how North London operates. So this was a quick history of London's gangs and ghettos. London is clearly a wild place filled with violence. Definitely not gentle people who drink tea. I want you all to type in the comments what you think about this and what side do you consider to be the most dangerous of London. In my opinion, South Side is an OG place that started a lot of things in England's music and street life. A historic place if you want to call that. The East London is clearly madness. I wouldn't want to go there even for a million dollars. The North Side in my opinion is the most certious side with gangs making their presence strong in their areas plus they know how to make money since they can afford all these firearms. I wanted to include the West London as well into my video but I heard that the West Side is not really like that. I wanted to put legend info in this video. So that's enough for today from Hip Hop List Daily. I hope you all enjoyed this video and you'll give me a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also click the notification bell to know every time I post a new video. See you next time.